Hello, hello again. It's been so long. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Laura and why the hell am I speaking English here? So here is Facebook and YouTube, if all goes well. Uh, this video will be posted on YouTube and not just being a Facebook Live. So why am I speaking English? So maybe some of you don't know about that. <laughs> You know, if you followed me on Facebook, on Instagram, or received my newsletter, I'm stopping my activities online. I've stopped them since beginning of June last month. And the reason was just that uh, working online was not working for me anymore. Uh, I really want to work in person. And the reason that I'm speaking English now is that I'm still not planning to settle in a French-speaking country. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so sorry. So it just makes um, so much more sense for me to share in English. So that's the reason why I'm speaking English now on this channel and on Facebook. Uh, yet you're still stuck with the French in me, the French speaker in me, because you can hear my accent. I'm clearly a French speaker. So anyway, hi, hi again. I hope that if you've been following uh, what I share in French, you can still hear English and we can still ex exchange on some levels. And if you're new to this space of mine, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to know there's someone new here. And um, yeah, welcome to this space that we're sharing together. Don't hesitate to say hi and to say where you're from. I'd love to know. So in this video, I wanted to share something I've learned this morning, okay? It's been a while I haven't shared something because I, I really wanted to wait for a calling, <laughs> a sense of calling to share. And that m might be my human design that is projected, I wait for the invitation. I wanted to wait to feel called, to feel invited to share about something. And maybe what I've realized and experienced this morning uh, was that calling to share, because I think it can be helpful for many people and not just me. So what I want to share about is, uh, well, you'll find it in the title of this video, which is how to heal wholesomely after we go through difficult events in life. We find ourselves kind of fragmented, yeah. And we start to look deeper into our wounds and our darkness and the stuff we want to heal, the stuff we want to heal from. And so that takes a lot of our focus on, let's say, sensitive parts of ourselves, uh, difficult parts of ourselves. And just that healing focus also can be a little bit tricky in the sense that we keep looking for things to heal, right? Uh, things to, to heal, like you name it, difficulty to trust, or insomnia, difficulty to fall asleep, or anxiety, we look to heal from stress, from chronic stress, or chronic pain, yeah, physical pain, emotional pain, or to heal our wound of feeling there's something inherently wrong with us, or healing or abandonment wound, or father wound, or mother wound, etc. So there's a lot of wounds open in us, and that can take so much of our focus on what's fragmented, what has been wounded. And I was realizing today, after some exercise I've done, and then walking out in the streets, and walking is always a great time for me to boop, start connecting things together and realize some stuff. Um, I really experience somatically how tremendously important it is to focus on the goodness. Yeah, to focus on what is already wholesome in us. Okay? So, let's just take a minute to integrate that and not move to quick as I tend to do. So somatic pose for that to just notice maybe right now in a state of mind, in a state of heart, emotionally in a state of body, somatic state, so the embodied state, what would be wounded for us right now, what seems to be fragmented for us, what is 
the focus of our healing is it something like betrayal <laughs> is it something healing from uh, self-doubt healing from the difficulty to trust ourselves healing from the belief that we are not able to uh, that we are incapable that we are not good enough to see where our focus wants to go when we think of healing something that is fragmented in us our thoughts will go somewhere, our emotion will go somewhere, it might stir up some anxiety, some discomfort, emotional discomfort of some sort. And then there's also the body, it might start to uh, create some inner turmoil, uh, which might appear in terms of sensations. So when I think about the healing that I want to do for myself, there's a tightening around the stomach, the chest, and all the way even toward the bottom of the uh, tongue, yeah? So there's a tightening toward the core. Just to map out somatically uh, what it means for us to have our focus on, what's it, on what is fragmented, okay? And feeling that all of this does not mean it's good or it's wrong or it's bad or it's right. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means that's what it is, okay? So let's just take a moment to map out what our focus on what's fragmented in us uh, correspond to, yeah? <sighs> okay. <laughs> and see, maybe there's a desire to start shaking because that's a lot of condensed energy, actually. What's fragmented is a lot of condensed energy. Uh, so maybe we want to <laughs> shake, <laughs> do something, laugh, laugh it out. Okay, then moving on. The thing that I want to share, so how to balance that focus on what's fragmented, on realizing the areas of tension in us, of con condensed energy in us, um, is to, to shift the focus, so as I said before, on what is wholesome already, on what is wholesome. And to do that, um, I want to share what I've learned this morning in one of those trainings that I'm completing online, because I'm always doing some kind of training online. That's my nerdy mind. I love to learn. And that training is a training to uh, become a neuro linguistic practitioner, okay? NLP. It's an NLP training, neuro linguistic practitioner course. Um, neuro linguistic programming. <laughs> That's what the P stands for neuro linguistic programming. So it has to do with the connection in our nervous system and it has to do with our language as well. So it's uh, um, joining together the subconscious parts in us and the conscious parts in us. It's super interesting. And the module I was going through today has a lot to do with value, okay? Value, a positive and negative value. And the positive ones are the ones that we unconsciously orient toward. It's the thing that are um, like our, our compass in life. It's the thing that we want to follow. And in that course, the, the mention, and I think it's going to resonate for everyone, we have values that are the foundation for us in life. It's the foundation of, it's our primordial compass, let's say. Something we really want to keep following throughout life. Since we were a bit more conscious being, we followed something that feels so true and so essential in us. It's organic embodied sense of I'm following that it's valuable in my life I want to honor that with my whole being and self and then there are values that orient throughout times um, that change and keep reorienting themselves uh, we reorient our values depending on what we go through in life okay so big events like I've experienced the loss of my father is something that rearranged my value yeah because something has to change in me, has to adapt to that big transition, to that loss, uh, but it might be something <laughs> more rejoicing, like, oh, to get married to someone or to welcome uh, a child in your life, yeah, it might rearrange things for you. So value will, uh, our values are 
both kind of very foundational and also they were adaptive, let's say. And I would like to invite you to do the work, just a little self-inquiry work experience that I did today. Uh, so you can get a taste of it yourself in this video. So the, the thing we want to establish first, and we'll only work with that, is the positive value. What are the positive values in our life? So do the exercise with me, okay? Do the exercise with me. The first question we're going to ask ourselves is um, to establish what values we've been following in the last three to four months. So in the last three to four months, what has been of most value to you? And when you ask yourself your que that question, I would love for you to speak to you using your name. So mirror me, but use your own name, obviously. Um, Laura, in the last three to four months of your life, what has been of the most um, important value to you? What has been most valuable to you? I'm going to read you my answer, okay? My answer, I've named five of them, and you might want to name at least three, okay? So for me, it's joy, self-love, community, healing, relaxation. Do not think too hard about it, let it come naturally. And I've read the five of mine, but I'm going to read a, a few more uh, from a value list I've received from, th like through that course. You can ask Chat GPT, give me a list of value, or you can ask Google and see what resonates with you. I would say just go toward what resonates, what just clicks instantly. So it could be goodness, gratitude, recognition, achievement, adventure, approval, autonomy, honesty, resourcefulness, innovation, collaboration, romance, inner peace, self-expression, knowledge, connection, competition, intimacy, security, respect, communication, honor, discovery, spirituality, faith, health, trust, strength, equality, simplicity, merit, creativity, sensuality, meaning, love, learning, success, fairness, All right, there just have been a few, and I'm probably going too fast for you, so pause this video if you can. All right. So that's the set of answer for the value that might have been more adaptive in your life, like over the last three to four months, what has been of most value to you. But let's consider, let's zoom out and consider your entire life, what has been most important. And you might find different answers, and that's great because that's the exercise. Yeah. So I, I read a few of mine, connection, honesty, learning, spirituality, genuineness, meaning, goodness. So take time as well to consider, okay, over the course of your entire life, what has been at the foundation of your compass? Yeah. What have you been orienting yourself toward throughout the years of your life, throughout the decades of your life. And why is this important to do is that um, if we do not know our values consciously, because we know them unconsciously, but if we don't know our values consciously, we're going to fall into a lot of inner conflicts because we're not realizing what we're headed toward, maybe with our heart, with something deeper in us. There might be a conflict with that or values that are known on an unconscious deep level and or conscious actions or choices, uh, things we keep in our life or situations we create in our life or keep ourselves 
in in our life, um, people we are with, our actions we take. There might be just so much conflicts between what we value and what we are engaged with externally or the choices we make. Yeah. So just being aware of our values can bring more coherency to our being, to the system that we are, and can help us align consciously our actions, our behaviors, our speech, our decisions, and the values, okay? So to really, that's the work of creating inner coherence, yeah? Inner and outer coherence, yeah? And coherence for me is bringing that sense of wholeness, wholesomeness. That, is that a word? <laughs> wholeness, okay? All right, so that was the first part of the exercise. Second part is a very important one because it's about ranking the positive values, okay, ranking of values. So making the list and kind of having a top three or a top five, all right? So to do that, you're going to look at the values you've listed and you can look at both values, like the one that I knew, like the last three and four months, uh, the last three, four months of your life. Look at them and then also look at the more general foundational values. And you're going to take two value at a time. So for example, I might start with, okay, what's most important for me? Joy or honesty? For me, it's joy. I'm going to compare joy to the other values I, I, I wrote, okay? Joy or self-love? Joy. I, I don't need to go through all of that. I know for me, actually, joy is the most important value. It's on my top, okay? top. Top of the list, number one, that's joy. Okay, joy. When I was much younger and I discovered the spirituality or the, um, yeah, spirituality in ancient Egypt, okay, very old civilization, um, very, very old and past civilization of ancient, ancient Egypt, I discovered um, a famous text it's called the Maxims of Ta Otep. Um, and I read a few of those phrases in that text. And the, the one that really stuck with me since I'm, what is it, like 11 or 12 when I discovered that, um, is that sentence that, say, that says, be joyful as long as you exist. Like existence means to be joyful, something like that. Something like that clicked in me and it never left me. So joy is really the utmost important value yeah, for me. So once you have your first one, then you go to the next two values. You compare self-love or connection, self-love or honesty, self-love or learning. If self-love is still the, the one that you, that you go for when you compare to. And so you keep comparing those two by two values and you make your list, yeah? Make your list. So again, you have to pause this video because I'm going way too quick for you. And after ranking those values, I'm gonna ask you to look at the top three because we're not done yet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Keep going, it's a little bit of a long exercise, but not that long though. And it, it will be very valuable for you, so please do it, <laughs> and then see how it goes in your life. So, my top three eventually, I'm telling you, is first is joy, second is goodness, second, uh, third one is learning. Okay, I have those three, top three value in my life. And just as a side note, it's not because you've ranked something the, la the, the last, okay? For me, eventually, the last value is spirituality, which I was quite surprised about. Still, it's on your list, so it's still something very valuable, so <laughs> avoid yourself the heartbreak. I'm <laughs> thinking, oh, it's not that valuable for me? No, of course it's valuable, it's just not maybe the, the, the ground, the ground of um, what you value, but it's still something you do value, okay, so no need for heartbreak here. <laughs> okay, so take the top three of your 
values. So for me, joy, goodness, and learning. And just consider a moment that when you are not oriented toward those values in your life, you might get a sense of dot, dot, dot. I'm going to let you complete the dot, dot, dots. Just take a few moments and connect with your body again, just a somatic checkup, somatic mapping. Consider those words, those values in your mind or read them on the paper, joy, learning, goodness, or whatever the top three values are for you. And observe what it's like to remove them, to conceive, imagine a day, a week, a month of life where you are not oriented toward those top three values. Okay. What does it feel like? I'm going to share for me to not have joy in my life. It feels like death. Okay, it feels like death. And same, to not have learning in my life, it feels like I'm, there's still a sense of death there. It's very interesting. Uh, there's a sense of not being me. That's interesting. There's uh, something, some kind of relation with identity, actually. There's, or, there's something missing in my core. Same with goodness, actually. Goodness, quite important. And to not be the witness of goodness or not add to goodness in this world feels like I'm not true to my core even. There's something that feels dead, that doesn't feel alive for me in, in, my, in my body. Yeah, so look at the sensation you have or feelings that might come up when you consider a day, a week, or your whole life without those top three values. And then kind of the last part finally of this exercise would be, well, knowing that, knowing that when you're not actively engaging with those values in your life, these values in your life, when you're not orienting yourself, making time to cultivate these values in your life, you might feel you're not you. Or you might feel a sense of not being alive or being dead or being just like a robot going through your day. So it means they're really important for you. And what we want to do, because they're so important, is to make sure we know how to, how to fulfill, okay? how to be actively engaged with those values. So the question would be, what has to happen for you in order to feel the first value and then in order to feel the second value in order to feel third value so ask yourself laura you say your name obviously laura what has to happen for me what has to happen for you to feel joy what has to happen for me to feel joy very simple answer that comes out is to look at nature to look at something natural and green, to look at flowers, okay? First answer comes up by itself, and then you ask yourself, what else? Okay, what else? Okay, what else uh, is needed for me to feel joy? To hear birds, to hear birds chirping. What else? To put on some music and dance. <laughs> to put on some music and dance, okay? What else? To laugh. Uh, I need to laugh. Uh, in order to be in joy, yeah? Joy is happening when I'm laughing, yeah? What else has to happen? Well, to have a genuine conversation with someone, to sense connection with someone is so joyful for me, yeah? And as you're doing that, I would encourage you also to take another somatic pose and see how your body is reacting to what you're saying, because it's not something you're uh, just speaking as from cognition. It's something deep in your body, something so simple as well. Um, so it's your wisdom, it's, your inner, it's the inner wisdom of your being that knows unconsciously, that knows already your values, that is responding to what needs to happen for you to feel that. Yeah? So go deep, deep within you to look at 
what needs to happen for me in order to feel my value, in, to, in order to be aligned with what's most valuable to me. Yeah? What needs to happen for me to feel goodness? Just some, witness someone doing something good. What else? To do some, something good myself. What else? To feel gratitude. What else? Someone in the street just smiling to me. <laughs> Caring kind words, kindness. Yeah. What is needed for me to feel the value of learning? Curiosity. I need to feel curious in my day. What else? I need to make time in my day to learn something that I like to learn. What else? I need to be in a state of open-mindedness. Otherwise, I cannot learn. Yeah. What else? To go on my mat, on my yoga mat, or to do a somatic practice. That makes me feel I'm learning about myself, I'm learning something. And that puts me in that state of whole, wholeness, wholesomeness. <laughs> yeah, okay. Go through those questions by yourself. Pause the video. And when you're done, just consider something that something is, consider, just establish for yourself how easily it is to feel those conditions. Yeah, What needs to happen for you to feel your value? Is it something easy to satisfy? Because then we might have to do some work around that because um, it might be difficult actually to feel satisfied with that value. And it doesn't mean that value should be changed. It just means that your access to that value should be enriched. Okay, That you might want to look to get creative. And that's something we could do in, in, in private practice. Yeah, Or you can do with um, your coach or anything if you're working with someone. How to enrich your access to that value. That is a question for you that I will not tackle here. But just be careful. Um, with that. Your values are great, there's nothing wrong with them, just look at your access. How accessible are your values and have you narrowed your access to your values? Okay. And if that has happened, if it's the, the access is narrow, again, no need for self-blame, it's just what it is. Okay, so we can get curious about that and then creative. How can I enrich my access to that value? And I would say for me, I think my access to those values is quite easy, but at times, at times I, I might not want to look at nature, I might not pay enough attention to nature, so I don't look at it, or I might not find myself in a space where I have access to nature. So how do I access joy? Yeah, you know, So I, even though in my sense of easy access, the work of enriching or access to a value is still something we can do, yeah? So, in our day, we create so much more doors that we can push and <laughs> engage ourselves and orient ourselves in a renewed way, innovative way, creative way to, yeah, to engage with our value, yeah? Okay, so last thing to just explore is we've mapped, we have mapped out at the beginning of this video uh, how, it, how it looks like for a focus to be entirely dedicated to healing and so to what is fragmented. Because we will think that healing is about resolving what is fragmented and that's not a wrong understanding but that's interesting too to consider that healing, to heal, that word itself comes from a root. Like, let's look at the etymology of that word, to heal. It comes from a, a root, Germanic root, that means whole. Yeah. So it's this coming back to the state of wholeness. And that's what I invite you to do more consciously with this sharing what it's like to focus on what is whole already. Because there are whole things inside you, wholesome things inside you. Yeah. 
do not doubt that. Or if you doubt it, make space. <laughs> make space for that truth to be part of your experience of yourself. What is already whole in you, you might find it through the values you have identified. Yeah. So, again, let's take those words in ourselves. Joy, maybe you just take one. It would be beautiful to just take one and let it resonate. Let it resonate in your mind. Joy, joy, or whatever value you have. Or you might want to try with the other two values of your top three. And let it resonate. Let that word resonate enough in you to see what happens on the thought level, on the mind level. See what happens on the heart and emotional level. And then see what happens on the body sensation level. Okay, for me, it's if before I had, when I was focused on what's fragmented, I had a gathering toward the center and a condensed energy toward the center that was um, circled by, like trapped by sensation. Now it's a softening and expansion that I'm feeling. And even the mind is just with joy and there's no Parasites, parasites, things that come and disturb my mind. It's just the resonance, the frequency of joy. And my heart feel like expanding in my chest and grounding in my emotions. And my body is also light and expanding. So notice that you have that in you. You have the access to those states in you to what is whole, okay? And hopefully, doing that little exercise was accessible enough for you that you really have that experience right now and see how, how close it is in your experience to reach that state, to come back to that state of maybe feeling more yourself as well. How much do you feel that you are you in that state? in that somatic state. And what does it mean to be really who we are? It's, it just means it feels true. It feels true, it feels right. There's a sense of rightness. It's like it fits. I've put back the pieces of the puzzles of who I am. They're fitting together. This might just mean that. It might mean something different for you. Just play with it. <laughs> okay. I think that's all I wanted to share for this video. Uh, let me know how it goes for you, if that was interesting, if you'd like more of them. Um, and I'll see you next time. Take care.